This is exactly right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Lady to Lady. We have some fun stuff we want to tell you about before getting into the episode. Mm -hmm. First of all, the uh, Britney investigative podcast that Tess and I have been working our butts off on. Uh, The trailer is out now. You can subscribe. It's called Toxic, the Britney Spears story. And we're making it with Witness Docs and Stitcher. And we're just really excited. We've been working so hard on this. Um, It'll be dropping this summer. So you can go subscribe right now. Listen to the trailer. Yeah, listen to the trailer. Check out the beautiful art and enjoy. Yeah. So so go find that Toxic, the Britney Spears story. Um, Subscribe now. And yeah. Yeah. Babs and Tess have been crushing it. I cannot wait to listen to it. So you guys make sure you do your thing right now. Because honestly, um, our scheduling has been a fucking nightmare because of this podcast. So (laughs) yeah. Listen to it and make it worth it. <laughs> make it yeah. worth our time. All of <laughs> yes, the crazy, damn it. <laughs> all the crazy shit that we've had to go through. Um, also, lady to lady, we have friggin' new merch now, and it oh is so God. cute. We we haven't taught. We like you guys need to go check out our merch right now on Exactly Right Store. We've got this amazing, cute like peach crop tank talk. It's t- tank talk. What am I saying? TikTok, TikTok, t- TikTok it <laughs> on sweatshirt. TikTok our tank top. Tank, it's a, tank it's a crop, sweatshirt on your TikTok. I feel like yes. to clarify, it is a sweatshirt. <laughs> it is a Thank sweatshirt. You. What did <laughs> I say? I, uh, my brain is not working, um, obviously. Although it would look really cute if you cut the sleeves off of it. But too. that's I'm just true. Just put it out there. If you so want buy an two. extra sleeve somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have one for the winter and one for the summertime. I'm just going to throw it out there. Mm-hmm. Um, we have great t shirts. We have a really cool, like, gray hat, like this, like, dad hat that, like, I love it so much. It's not chuggy. Or none of our stuff is chuggy. <laughs> oh, never. Oh, no. It's... Don't say that. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and then we also have, yeah, a really cute, like, a navy t-shirt available. So go check that out right now. It's all our new stuff that we're super excited about. And also, if you are not a Patreon member yet, you're missing out. We've been doing so much fun stuff over there. That's where we do our Reader's Digest jokes every month. We have a weekly bonus episode that you can listen to. We just do lots of stuff, fun stuff. And we're doing this new thing where if we get 250 patrons patrons by my birthday july 16th we will finally do an eating contest Mm -hmm. you're gonna be able to vote on what kind it is we're gonna make good on that threat so you're gonna want (laughs) a piece of that action so it's gonna be either watermelon pie or peeps you're gonna vote on that but we want to get to 250 by july 16th so go sign up for our patreon right now lady to lady.com slash patreon Patreon.com no, no, slash lady nope. to lady. What's yeah. wrong with me? I'm dyslexic this <laughs> We're morning. Exhausted. Patreon.com <laughs> slash lady to lady. We've got two dollar, five dollar, and ten dollar tiers. You get and twenty dollar tiers. You get all sorts of really fun stuff on all of them. Uh, and we will we're gonna eat it on a live stream. Uh, oh my God. and you know how great that's gonna look. Um it'll be awesome. It'll be uh, yeah, a sacrificing for you. Oh, I just real quick. Also, I just want to throw in there uh, my live show uh, picture this well live on Zoom now. It's um, it's animated animators paired up with comedians to live animate your jokes behind you. We um, have three new dates coming up uh, for the summer. Uh, our next one is June 23rd. Uh, you can get all your tickets at RushTix.com. And we have awesome animators that work on shows like BoJack Horseman and Big Mouth and Adventure Time. And uh, it's just it's such a fun, silly, awesome show. So uh, we're still doing it online and um, someday we won't be. So if you live anywhere that's not LA or New York and you really want to see what our stand-up is like and what my jokes drawn look like, there's a lot of like real crazy shit that happens in the show and it's my favorite my favorite thing besides Lady to Lady to do in comedy. So come on over and get your ticks at rushtix.com. It's really fun. Um, that's all our announcements. Woo, yeah, yeah. Our guest to today, you guys, this is such a fun show. We have Peaches on, so why don't you kick back, relax, and enjoy our fantastic time with Peaches. I'm Babs Gray, and I'm going car shopping. Can someone tell me which crop top will get me the best APR? <laughs> <laughs> You'll figure it out. Hey, I'm Brandy Posey, and uh, I'm going to try something different this weekend and not bring a book on a vacation, so maybe I'll actually read one. Ooh, <laughs> smart. I'm Tess Barker, and abort the Republican Party. Hey. And this is Lady to Lady. Can you keep a secret? Neither can we. <laughs> we can Barbara Brandy and of course Big Tess We got a show for everyone that's the fucking best Come on baby, it's time to hang out with your favorite ladies Ladies and ladies, ladies and ladies Oh my god! Yay! Let's uh, let's do it, you guys. Should we bring in our guest? I'm so excited. So Absolutely. excited! Yeah, we're so stoked to have her today. 
She's a legend. Uh, her seminal album, The Teachers of Peaches, turned 20 last year. She's incredible. We're just so honored to yeah, have her on the show. It's Peaches! Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Coming to us from Berlin, midnight over there. That's so right. thank you for either yeah. staying up or not going. Yeah. I don't know which one it is. If you're How- waking up or if you're staying up for us. But thank you for either one. I don't know anymore. It doesn't even matter, does yeah. it? <laughs> Peaches, I have a question. Since you're technically in the future, how is the rest of today? Are we going to be all right? Does anything happen? Uh, the sun also rises. Oh, oh good answer. Fuck. Good answer. I had bets mm. against that, but okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, someday that bet will be right, Barbara. Don't worry. <laughs> if I go to well, Alaska, I, w- I guess. You know, something I, you know, I was out past curfew last week because we still had curfew up until mm-hmm. Friday. So wow, we've been wow. in lockdown for um, six months. And we decided to be bad kids, me and my partner and two friends. We were in the park after 10 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Isn't that yeah, crazy? That's, yeah, that's, yeah. Crazy. So that's wow. crazy. There was like three oh teenagers there and we started turning up and they ran away. So that's crazy. <laughs> we scared the teenagers away. Mm-hmm. And then we, I, this is, seriously, we made an Elon Musk comment Mm-hmm. And then we looked up in the sky, and guess what we saw? Elon Musk? S- SpaceX. The, s- the Starlink. How do you know what it was? I didn't. We didn't. I looked up. I was like, oh, the moon is so cool. Wow, curfew. Fuck curfew. Blah, blah. And then I was like, there's a line of Christmas lights in a row in white going across the sky. What is happening? Whoa. That's so and weird. Literally like five minutes after we mentioned said name. I don't like so that. that. This gives sick. me like Candyman vibes. Like if you say he's gonna appear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so that, I mean, that. if it was anyone other than Elon Musk, I'd be like, oh, synchronicity. Like you guys were just like dialed in. But we can't trust that motherfucker, can we? <laughs> I don't think so. It was just like when you talk about, you know, I need new shelving, and then on your phone they show you all the different shelving plans. Right. All of he's a sudden, listening. He didn't even. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think his goal is not to live on Mars, but to become the algorithm. So I think that makes mm. sense. Oh, oh, I'm really sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. No, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. He'll be here. No, no, no. Because I, I prepared a pun. What is, oh, what oh. is it? No, no. <laughs> oh, no, my God. Apologize, apologize for a pun. You're in a All right. pun. Well, I'm Canadian. So I say, place. sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> All right. What? Ex, what what is the name for an ex vice president who uh, I'm, I'm sorry, see, I'm not good at this. OK, what is the name of an ex vice president who collects data with a beat? What? President. what? What? Oh, I don't I don't have it. What is it, Peaches? You actually said it already. Oh, ex vice president. OK, ex vice president. Pence. Doesn't have to be Pence. the last ex vice president. Okay, Al Gore. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Al Gore rhythm. Oh! Al Gore rhythm. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 All yes. Right. Yes. <laughs> that was great. Thank you for also reminding us that there was a time before the last four years. We appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. And was Mike I just Pence, had a pan- Mike Pence. Who else was? was I there wish you guys had, had felt the panic in my brain that was like, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to name a single human being. Like, <laughs> my brain is not going to operate right now. Okay, that's really good. You should write that in. To we're we're doing Reader's Digest. We're trying to get published in Reader's Digest, and yes. I think that okay. you could we, you could write that joke in for them and perhaps okay, great, get great. your pun mm-hmm. in there. Lady to lady approved. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Although my my partner isn't into puns, and he said, you're going to get some punishment. And then I was like, your pun is actually better than mine, so. (laughs) Well, this is definitely a pun safe space. If you have more that you feel like dropping over the next hour, you are more than welcome to. I love a pun. It's a fun little, like, magic mathematical equation that is a joke, and it's just, I love them. I watched like a pun off once and as horrible as really? that sounds, it was actually, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was very entertaining. Well, if you're doing it in real time, I think it, that definitely adds stakes. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. I think it, if it, yeah, if it comes to you, that's like, okay, wow, well, this is kind of well, like a magic act. I mean, that's why I don't know about you guys, but every time I watch a spelling bee, I get so nervous. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know what you mean. Wait, how many? How, how often are you watching a spelling bee? Just from time. 
time to time. There's also a musical called Spelling mm-hmm. for the Spelling Bee of Putnam County. Um, so, you know, spelling bees come and go in my life. But all they're doing is spelling. Yeah. But it feels and, really and, high I mean, are you, are, are you a, a good speller or a bad speller? Dude. Okay. So when I was a kid, I was like, I, I never made it far in the spelling bee, but I usually made it to like the school one. I would say mm-hmm. I was like in the upper, I was in the high percentile. But as an adult, that has atrophied completely. I just, I literally just punch a series of keys on my computer and hope that it knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> but I think about. it's because we know it's going to fix it, you know? Right, like, right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a good speller, but I'm not like, you know, who's, who needs to put in the work? <laughs> I, I remember being a child in a spelling bee and I had misheard the, um, oh, who's the guy that spelled potato wrong? Um, oh, that's that was Dan Quayle. Quayle. Another Dan Quayle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That that's a that was the spelling bee that like that's the most high stakes spelling bee of all time because he like yeah. lost and his he's career. Like, Kid, sorry, you spelt that wrong. But I remember, <laughs> isn't that I what happened? Only, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> like blame the kid. Basically, I only remember hearing like half of that story as a child. But then in my brain, I was like, oh, that man spelled it with an e, so that must be right. And then at the spelling bee, I got the word potato and I put oh, an no. e on it and I oh, lost. Oh, so you Dan Quayle so, it. I have massive Dan Quayle, like a lifetime beef with Dan Quayle because of this. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? You Dan Quayle yeah. it. That's why it's important. Quailed it. <laughs> You're punny, Peaches. You're really punny. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's What are the odds of you getting potato? Yeah, in the same oh year. God. And th- it just goes to show, read the article, don't just read the headline, even when you're in second grade. Um, yes, mm-hmm. that's that's a... <laughs> now, I think potato is one of those words where it's like a Berenstein Bears, like, it just depends on how you experience it. Is there really a correct <laughs> spelling, or is it just how your memory decides it's spelled? And would people do the same thing with tomato? Mm. Oh, hold up. Yeah. I need to think about this. Is there an E in tomato? No. 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 I didn't think about it. <laughs> and yeah, no, there's not an E in tomato. I think but... it's because you have the E S in potatoes and tomatoes, so it gets so, you know. Yeah, and come on, you're not you're only eating one of those. Well, like, there's, there's also multiple. that Louie and Ella song that kind of fucks us up, right? Like potato, potato, like maybe tomato, the e- tomato. tomato. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, are there two spellings? I don't know. You guys, guys, let's just call the whole thing off, okay? Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. There's the bit. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, Peaches, have you seen this, the viral, the song, The uh, Racist Sexist Boy? I was going to say, Racist Sexist Sex Boy. I cannot racist. get it out of my fucking head, and I'm like so it's proud. So everything about it, it's everything. It's, I feel really, I, I, think, I think that little boy learned a lot. Oh, this man. week too. Can you? And I, can you I hope that his. I hope that his parents also learned a lot this week. Same. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. It's okay, a, it's you just guys so. Need to fill me in. I haven't seen it. You haven't? No. Holy oh, shit! No. Oh, test. Wait, Babs. Can you pull it up and play a little bit? Yeah. It's uh. It's basically these like band of four girls who are like twelve to thirteen years old. And let me just. Yeah, I'll just show it to you. Well, but it starts but, with like. There's this um. This girl, uh, and um, she's Chinese American, and she tells mm-hmm. the story of, she said, I'm Chinese American, and this boy in my class came up to me and told me that if I was Chinese, that I'm not allowed to, um, I'm not allowed to talk to him, to you. Mm-hmm. And she said, well, I am. Mm-hmm. And, oh, you have it here, I see. Yeah, you'll see, here. Oh, here Sorry. it is, here you go. Yeah. She's wearing a bikini kill shirt? Oh, yeah, I know, that, that's amazing, yeah, too. they're in a library. Yeah. These kids are amazing. Oh, they're in a library? Just, yeah, <laughs> and they're in the library exactly. I love it. <laughs> yes. It's so fucking good. It. It's really so, so awesome. Yeah, it's so like Bikini Kill, L7, like it's just it's, Huggy Bear. It's all of it's it's like 90s, you know, Riot Girl awesomeness. Wow. That really yeah. like it's moments like that where I'm like, wow, the future will be okay. That is so cute. 
I, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's cool it's to really see good. like little girls still like being like knowing who Bikini Kill is and stuff. And it's like, no, the, the, the heritage is, is being passed down. And like, apparently the they like Lindas. even they open the, so I was like, Oh fuck. Yeah. These chicks are amazing. And I looked them up and they're like already huge. And they just signed with Epitaph records like after yeah. this, which is yeah, like amazing sure. and scary. Cause I'm like, Oh God, know. don't, you know, like that's what yeah, happened right. in the nineties too. Right. They yeah. Also, yeah like, these like, huge oh, deals like, please be okay. <laughs> But, right. yeah, exactly. but it was very yeah inspiring and just like exciting to see mm-hmm. yeah just so badass and the song's so good I like cannot get out of my head it's just, such a you know I was like oh this is gonna be cute and then I'm like oh shit yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah that yeah. sound comes out and you're like whoa yeah 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 I'm very I've been reading um it's not a new book but you know Viv Albertine she's the uh, guitarist mm-hmm. from the Slits oh cool yeah mm-hmm. do you know the Slits and mm-hmm. I didn't realize that. Ari Up was 14 years old. Wow. Jesus. Isn't it it's so impressive when you think like how like when I think about like where I was at 14 and then these like the kids what they've created at that age already is yeah. it's so cool. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just I, I, I'm just so impressed by that, you know. I mean, yeah. it wasn't like a lip sync to a Spice Girl song. So, you know, I think my <laughs> art's also valid. But We all bring something to the table. <laughs> so. Of course. Of course. Peaches, when did you get into music? Um, well, I got or? into music quite quite late, actually. So, um, you know, I picked up an acoustic guitar probably when I was like 18. Oh, wow. Oh, awesome. And I was just like playing whatever, like, hey, hippie people, let's go. Yeah. I'll be a hippie <laughs> person, too. Let's learn some guitar. And then, yeah. um, yeah, no, I just kept playing, blah, 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 started playing electric guitar, started playing with people, blah, 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 years go by. And um, <laughs> then everybody moves away and I had to, I got a machine and started to play mm-hmm. everything myself. Yeah. So I, I mean, Peaches didn't start till I was like 33. Wow. That's awesome. Were you always yeah. really passionate about music? Yeah. I, I, it was weird because I didn't really know that I could be a musician. I, I was like... Mm-hmm thought that you know your fam- it's in your family you have to like you know learn how to read music how do you get there mm-hmm. whatever you know all i knew was like musicals oh love that mm-hmm. you know that's what i knew i just like mm-hmm. sang along with musicals and I-, I would pick up every song you know like one of those things but i didn't know but it's amazing it's amazing what you can do if you just are passionate or into it it's crazy yeah yeah totally. And then you realize, oh, I've been into that all along. I didn't even just make the connect. You know, you, then you start making the connections, which is really fun. Mm-hmm. Oh, totally. Mm-hmm. I know there's so much stuff that I've gotten into as an adult where I'm like, that's so random. And then I'm like, is it though? Like, you can pretty <laughs> much trace that back and see where this came from. No, it's funny. Yeah, I'll yeah, be like, totally. when did I want to like be a comedian or do whatever? And I don't think I thought about doing comedy until later in life. But then I like yeah. look at my entire history of being a human and I'm like, oh, yeah, you were doing right. puppet shows at three years old. Like, you probably <laughs> are going to do something like this. <laughs> well, yeah. we, did you all have like, I'm sure you've talked about this before, so you can tell me like, sorry, we've been there. But you're like inspiration for comedy, like when you were... Was it was it a comedian? Was it like a show? Was it? Well, for me at least, it was uh, very specifically a moment in Ace Ventura Two: Pet Detective, <laughs> where he gets shit out of the rhino's asshole, and it was like the funniest thing that I'd ever seen in my life. I remember seeing it in theaters and being like, "This is anarchy! I want to be a part of it!" Amazing. <laughs> and I was like, "I've never felt this good in my life. I want to find a way to feel this all the time." Yeah, and we, like yeah. Brandy's been seeking out her own. Pooping out of a rhino's asshole. We're gonna asshole. make that happen. Be, we're gonna make that happen. <laughs> Thank yeah, you guys that'd be amazing. so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like my stand-up is nothing like that at all. But that was this like click of like, oh, I I love comedy because of like the chaos that it that that it can be and like the 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 way that it like lets like you have no control of yourself when you're like laughing in that moment. It was so silly. Mm-hmm. Also, my like bad grandmother was there with me and she hated it. Uh, and that made me like it even more. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I had, like oh. a hardcore Catholic grandma that took us. And then literally after that, this is, I was probably in like fifth or sixth grade. Every time that I would see her after that, the first question that she would ask is she go, do you still like that Jim Carrey? And I would say, <laughs> yes. And then she wouldn't ask me any other questions. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. In so her head, hard, she was but. probably like, this is what I remember about Brandy. She likes Jim Carrey. <laughs> Yeah, and she hated me for making her see that. It was great. <laughs> I thought you meant like when you said bad grandma, I thought she was like the bad grandma because she brought you to oh. that movie. Yeah, that's, that's what, I what I thought too. Nah. Yeah, I was like, like the bad, bad grandma's grandpa. the good grandma. Yeah, exactly. I wish. Exactly. 
I wish. No, she, shitty grandma, I guess is what I should say instead. <laughs> I remember my brother asked my grandparents, like for for Hanukkah, um, to, like for the um, George Carlin album, mm. you know. Mm. Oh and yeah. And so they're like, let's listen to it all together. And they were like, <laughs> out of that room right away. They're like, okay, <laughs> what did we just buy? Because you know, you don't sample, you don't hear things before because it was like vinyl. Of and course, yeah. Closed yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, I did that totally. with my mom with uh, Nirvana. Because I was like, Mom, can I get this album? She's like, that sounds nice, Nirvana. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I have told, I mean, I've told the story before, but my best <laughs> version of that was Too Close, the boner song. You're getting mm-hmm. real, close. real close. You're making it hard for me. Okay. So the beginning of that song and the actual version, he's like, damn, baby, you're making me so hard. And I didn't know that. And we were at the CD store and I'm like, mom, I want this album. And I just watch her. I get to watch my mom put on the headphones and listen. <laughs> and then she's like, no, you're not getting this. Oh, no, <laughs> you didn't get it. No, that's OK. I feel like that was I mean, I don't know about the rest of that album, but I probably was OK. Not, you know, that was yeah. probably I think their only hit. So. You might be OK with just the single. Album yeah. Album, but you know what? <laughs> I'm going to put that song on a playlist soon because it's that a is great. A- it holds up. Mm-hmm. It holds up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, do, you, do you guys know that song, um, Let Me Smell Your Dick? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. So yes, good. That sounds yes. familiar. <laughs> it just made me think of that. I don't know why the, uh, the other end. Similar um, oeuvre. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, who was I just love. I just love that song forever. Yeah. yeah. Risque, right? I think. Is yeah. Like a- That's yeah. Good. <laughs> quickly, quickly Googling. I'm like, like, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> I just got a drink Ooh. made because it's midnight. Ooh. Ooh. What are we working with that there? very nice. What is this? Ooh, it's like pineapple. I don't, there's some maple syrup in there. It's oh. refreshing. And some spice and pineapple and tequila. Lovely. I've been on such a tequila kick lately. Mm. It's good for you. It's uh, It's a probiotic. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> it's an anti-inflammatory. It's a probiotic. Yeah, yeah, I just drink that with cranberry juice and, you know, my pussy's ready to go. It's an yeah. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thinking about, like, influences growing up, I mean, I don't remember. We listened to, like, some comedy albums and stuff as a family, but I only remember really getting obsessed with stuff, like, later. I got obsessed with British comedy and, like, Strangers with Candy and just, like, really weird Ugh, stuff. Strangers with Candy is so good. Yeah, I remember yeah. being in my college dorm and like seeing that randomly and just being like, what is this? And like, I must do it this. It blew my mind. Yeah. And I think I just became so obsessed with comedy that it was like, I guess I have to do it because <laughs> <laughs> it's all I'm thinking about. <laughs> yeah. For me, it was, I mean, this is so generic, but like as a kid, it was I Love Lucy. Like, I just oh, love. Wow. Oh, yeah. I mean, classic, right? Like, though. my family didn't have cable. We literally had like, bunny ears on our tv so that was like one of the only channels we got <laughs> even though it was wow, the, eight, or the yeah. 90s um so i i bit i watched lucy my entire childhood and that's definitely like what got me into comedy i think because i was just in awe they're I making that new them. like lucy and desi movie or something aren't they or really? no. yeah. who's nicole gonna be lucy kidman. nicole kidman oh yeah i forgot very but she can't really choice. move her face anymore. How huh? no. she no, make all those great faces? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, I'm like, curious to see I, how that works. I would like to say that I'm coming at this as from a place of I like Nicole Kidman. Yes. Oh, yes. I do too. Of course. Yes. That said, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. But prove us wrong. Prove us wrong. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, you need a great comic actor, I think, to pull that off. But also, no one. I don't know if anyone can pull off Lucy. So maybe might as well just be Nicole Kidman. They right. they can probably right. just deep fake some fucking Lucy <laughs> Lander face. You know or who something. I would I would cast wow. is uh, Isla Fisher. Oh yeah, yeah. I think she could pull it off way I, more. Yeah, for sure. Somebody some had Hollywood, a few casting ideas that I can't remember, but yeah, I don't know. Nicole, as long as your face can move, that would be a good yes. idea. Like, <laughs> you got to make these faces. That's just all. Like when the faces, it's like Gilda Radner time. You know, like. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that's still like what I do in my comedy. Like if I don't, and if any, if nothing else, I just kind of like make a face. It always oh, yeah. works. It sells it a little bit harder for sure. Exactly. <laughs> All right, we've got some face stretches to do. We'll be back mm-hmm. in a second, everybody. BRB. Hey. 
Hey, we all need super comfortable, cute, sustainable shoes. And that's where Rothy's comes in. Have you guys heard about the company Rothy's? They're making stylish, sustainable shoes and bags. I think I have. They're the ones that are crafted with eco-friendly materials like repurposed plastic water bottles and marine plastic, right? Yeah, I think they're also, they come in like a wide range of styles and come in an ever-changing array of colors, prints, and patterns. We Mm. love Rothy's. I love Rothy's. I got a pair of the leopard print sneaks, and y'all, they are my new favorite shoes. I am obsessed. They're like the cutest cut. They're super comfy. I can wear them around the house all day or pair them with like skirts and dresses and look flirty and fun. And I throw them in the wash once a week, and they get clean all over again. That is my favorite thing about my Rothy's because I wear them so often that they definitely need to be cleaned. And you can just throw them in the washer. That's my favorite thing. It's amazing. I wish that all my shoes did that. But all my shoes don't. Rothy's are the only one that do. I got this really cute. It's like a dark navy blue and black design. And they're just so cute. And I feel like they really step up my game. I'm so excited to wear them out. I've been wearing them around my house. But I'm very excited to wear them out and about in the world. Yeah, we love our Rothy's. And they've transformed nearly 100 million bottles into beautiful shoes, handbags, and face masks. So check out all the amazing shoes, bags, and masks available right now at rothys.com slash lady. That's rothys.com, R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash lady. Style and sustainability meet to create your new favorites. Head to rothys.com slash lady today. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Lady to Lady. I'm Brandy. I'm Babs. I'm Tess. And we're here with Peaches. Hello. <laughs> um, so I have, we were talking about face stretches. I have some mm-hmm. important physical fitness advice for everyone. Okay. Oh, okay. I've learned the proper way to do Kegels. Oh. <laughs> so I have a friend who is a physical therapist and she was <laughs> like, here's what you got to do. You stand with your feet like apart, but put your weight on your like balls of your feet so that mm-hmm. it's like almost like you're skiing. Okay. And that gets like the muscles, the front pussy muscles more tight. Like, so just basically just pretend like you're skiing when you do Kegels. Tr- trust okay. me, you'll feel it when you feel it. So pizza, you French fry, pizza, French fry, pizza, French fry, <laughs> but like with your pussy. Okay, great. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like, I, I, I really, uh, you know, I've got to admit that I, I can't work. Oh my God. It's oh, so same. hard. I give up. Honestly, and, and I, I think feel it's like... important to admit that you can't though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and I true. feel like, um... Kegels and twerking, I think they're both as important as each other. Like in that, I think I mm-hmm. think if I could twerk, I think that would do a lot of what Kegels do too. That is true. Yeah, it's kind of like so. yeah, yeah. It's, it's all pelvic, pelvic floor. Yeah, it's control pelvic the same muscle plan. group. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a three bed two bath going on down there. So mm, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and frankly, it's a little too spacious. We could put some walls up. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Just kidding. I My pussy's fine. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Probably uh, a balcony installed. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Peaches, we're going to play a game to get to know you. Uh, 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 mm-hmm. <laughs> it's called who what, who, what, When, Where, Why. Answer these questions however you want. You yeah. A theme okay. song, though. Yeah, let's... Rock our theme song. (laughs) Who, what, where, when? Who, what, where, when? Who, what, where, when? Who, what, where, when? Why? So if you need an opener when things open back up, Mm, just know. We're we're available. (laughs) Okay. Upwards of 10 10 second uh, jingles. We can wear a three person (laughs) shirt and yell singles no one, or jingles no one. Well, why don't you do a cover of Race Sexist Boy? Oh. We could totally do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Shout out to the Linda Lindas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. Who is the coolest musician you've hung out with besides yourself? Obviously. The coolest musician. I've. Do you know what? The coolest musician I've hung out with. I hung out for, for with. I hung out with Joan Jett. Oh shit! That's pretty cool. She was very cool. She Did you guys really tour fun. together or no? No, we didn't. We did a track together and then we hung out together and then um, we recorded and it was really fun. I was like, she was recording guitar and I put on a gold bikini and I was like, it was like a studio with a glass and I was like pressing my ass on the glass, like being the. <laughs> That's perfect. Get the, that like, percussion inspirational in. bikini <laughs> badass girl while Joan Jett was being like the. 
Holy shit. Rocker. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. That's so cool. I love her. Yeah. I just read, I, I'm really into reading all <laughs> these biographies because I can't sleep. So I, um, I wake up and I, uh, I just, when I wake up, it's not like I can't sleep. It's my like, I'm in some loop and I'm like, oh my God, I better do something to like, just mm-hmm. get out. So I've started to read biographies. Mm-hmm. I started with White Line Fever, which was <laughs> really weird. Do you know that one? Lemmy's no. biography. Uh-uh. It's very it's weird. great though. Yeah. It's, it is great. But uh, when did you hear it was great? How long ago? <laughs> Uh, you know what I mean? Because now you read it, you're like, it's great, but it's kind of, there's a lot of really problematic things, even though he oh. doesn't think he's being problematic. You right. know? Yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 No, so I, I, I was I like, a long oh. time ago. Yeah. 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 So everyone was like, it's so good. But then I was reading, I was like, oh, I don't know about you saying that or having an opinion about, you know, the Rodney King, King riots or, you know, oh, also, I love women, you know, and then blah, blah, right. things right. that are. Iffy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, for sure. Yeah. So that yeah, was my, the first one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, I read The uh, Neon Angel. Do you know that one? It's Sherry Carey's no, biography, cool. who was uh, the Runaway singer from The Runaways. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Who's now a chainsaw artist. Oh, That's cool. Sick. What is a chainsaw artist? What the fuck she is that? She makes like sculptures at a chainsaw. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, my friend Walker does that. It's really cool. Like these like yeah. big giant pieces and stuff. That's awesome. Good for her. And yeah, I imagine. Was that her- your favorite one? Yeah. Well, yeah. And now I'm reading that Viv Albertine one that's really good. Mm. Where I found out like Aria was 14. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever thought about writing a memoir? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have. But yeah. yeah. But I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how honest I could be. I don't know if if I f- would find it interesting. You know, like, I guess maybe that's why I'm also reading them, too. Like, hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do but, I want to do? Yeah. It's do hard I, to think that, of yourself oh. in that way. It's hard to be like, OK, now what is my story for the people? It's a weird. Is my like, story thing interesting. To- <laughs> doesn't seem interesting to me. It's my story. We yeah. have. I've, I've talked to people who've written memoirs and stuff, and I. I one challenge they've all seemed to have too is like your own memory is actually pretty unreliable. Like of it's course. gotta be hard to like, I don't know what fucking year what happened or who I was hanging out with during like, it's right, gotta right. be hard to put everything in chronological order and you know, obviously piece it together as accurately as you can. Yeah. yeah. I'm always, whenever people have like, com- like conversations in memoirs, I'm like, what? <laughs> How <do> you- <laughs> so you, How do you remember this that? Up. Yeah, this right, is full, right. This is fully made up, right? Okay. <laughs> I mean, the good thing, you know, for us is we have about eight years of 100 mm. hours <laughs> or, you know, hundreds of off hours on a podcast. Not that I'm going to listen to, but I will probably pay <laughs> someone off of Craigslist to listen to someday if go. I ever want to write a book. <laughs> Love <laughs> a Craigslist ghostwriter. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll hire the guy. Yeah. Um, so is that the best, that's the best place to find a ghostwriter? I think, or I'm just saying if I'm going to find someone to listen to it and tell me what's good out of it, like, I'm just (laughs) like, I don't know, just someone who hasn't heard it before, you know. You mean I shouldn't just put a, like, a message on Facebook? Hey, need a ghostwriter. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, um, that would be like the worst idea. Yeah. Hey, stranger, do you want to go through all my personal shit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get to be real careful with that. <laughs> oh, great. Okay. You do great. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I actually, I, so I have ghostwritten people's, um, this might be illegal, but I have ghostwritten people's college entrance essays for them. <laughs> oh and my God. I really enjoyed it. I like having people tell me like their story and then kind of like me. It, for me, it's like kind of almost easier to do it for someone else than to do it. Oh, for yeah. Myself. I mean, I think right, that's fine. Right. I think a whole memoir. Yeah. A whole book would be hard. But I've written people's yeah um, bios before because it is like it's just so much easier to have somebody else write that shit for you. And of they're course. like, remember, you're fucking awesome. It's like, oh, yeah, well, I'm not going to write that about myself. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, OK, Peaches, next question. You obviously have like some of the most incredible stage style. So what is your favorite stage outfit slash costume? Oh, okay. Well, I have this costume. It's really hard to like, it's like, it's, <laughs> it's like a cone head blonde straight wig oh that, uh, that goes down to uh-huh. my shoulders. And when it meets at my shoulders, there's like a shoulder hair kind of cape that goes with it that's the same color 
and um, it's attached to a bra that has um, seven breasts, and they're all like they're all those like uh, silicon breasts. Yeah, and then. There, that's like the bikini top, the whole yeah. bikini top area. And then uh, there's bikinis that go with it, and the bikini just consists of a single boob and um, a long you know, clump of straight blonde hair going down. Wow. That's awesome. So did you yeah. design that? Do you usually design your own costumes, or do you work with people? Or Yeah, I work with people. Like I, It's funny because when I started, I wore like – the cheapest like there's this store in Canada called Le Chateau and they have like mm-hmm. the cheapest kind of bathing suit and I, I don't know I don't know it's like Rainbow maybe do you know the store Rainbow or is that yeah. East Coast okay Rainbow mm-hmm. so it's like really cheap stuff and I I, I was only going to wear Rainbow and cheap kind of um, you know like spandexy stripper cheap mm-hmm. strippery kind of outfits yeah. And that that was my thing. And then mm-hmm. people started to send me amazing stuff. Oh, awesome. Like like uh, the first thing that was sent to me was this this woman she made um she made gloves, but it was a cape and it was said triple X on it and the the gloves went like this. It was so it was really like made me feel like Ozzy Osbourne and that's when Whoa. I started to spit blood. So a lot of the costumes yeah. started to inspire different things I would do on stage too, which was so amazing. And then that would start to you know, start this banter with people uh, like for my second album, Father Fucker, I'm wearing this one piece that has a hand on it, uh, mm-hmm. just a hand here. So somebody sent that someone threw that um, Wendy and Jim, these designers, they threw it on stage to me and I had it. And then I would always <laughs> put my hand there, or you know, stuff like that. And then um, and then I started to meet designers. So that particular outfit was not made for me, but Char- it was made by Charlie Limandu. Um, and he, but he said he was inspired by me and it was, yeah, he made all these amazing, weird costumes for, um, I'm spacing out on the name, this like Paris show that, that it's Mm -hmm. all like supposed to be, all the women are the exact same size and the exact same breast size and the same shoulder width and everything. Mm -hmm. But then he made these weird costumes for them. And then after it, he's like, here. This for you can have. Oh, it. that's amazing! Holy shit! But but the weird thing was like the um, silicon nipples kept coming off. So I'd be in in a show and I'd be like seeing these weird boogers all over me, and I didn't know what it was. It'd be like the silicon boogers on me. And, you know. so and I then can't did you wear just it all have the time like? And it's quite heavy. Did yeah, you have yeah. nipples like a la carte on stage? Just kind of like confetti. <laughs> Wow, I should do that. I should have a confetti cannon of nipples. <laughs> yeah. That's I mean, so good. I think Throw that's going to happen. Crowd. Thank ah! you. Of course. I'm so honored. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did get another costume that was a bodysuit that was made out of my nipples. Like, my, I got my nipples um, cast, and then those nipples went all over as a costume. Oh, that's so cool. I love that. Too. Yeah. <laughs> that's got to be super validating to have, like, fans making costumes that like get you to to be like oh yeah like I'm putting out exactly like what I yeah, want to get that, back and they and they're seeing what what is even possible beyond what I'm doing that is exactly it and that's that's the point that's the you know mm-hmm. that's the sharing that's the community yeah I think like the biggest compliment is like when your creativity can inspire creativity in somebody else too you know it's just yes. beautiful beautiful yeah. and that can happen <laughs> that's awesome okay Man. next question peaches <laughs> Where do you feel most inspired? Where do I feel most? It's uh, where do I? I don't. I you know what? I I guess it's it's not really a very. I, I it's not where do I feel most inspired. I guess it's more like reacting to things that happen. It's more like what is going on, and then I'm like, what is going on? Mm. And then I react to it, and then I'm inspired by it. Maybe I'm angry by it or maybe I'm like, wow, you know? Yeah. It's not like where, really. Because, you know, I could say like the ocean and, the, you know, or, <laughs> or you know. <laughs> the sunset. A brothel or, you know. <laughs> it's, it's not really or this time of day. It's more like reacting. It's just that something, something that I've heard or it, I, I just need to, I just need to like have a feeling about it or a reaction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you feel like you're you're kind of normally in that place where you're very perceptive to what's going on around you? Like it could happen at any time or? It's funny because I, I like to believe I am. 
Mm-hmm. But then sometimes I'm like, Kyle, come on, come to me. Why? <laughs> where, where is it? You know, it is yeah. wild how you can't predict that. Yeah. Like, yeah, you can't. Yeah. Mm hmm. I have, yeah. this is not like the same thing, but I have this joke I'm kind of working on about um, just how we're, you know, humans suck or whatever, and we're killing the ocean. But uh, I was like listening, NPR the other day had this story about like digging all this trash out of this lake and it inspired another part of like this joke I'm, ha- I'm thinking of. And I was like, oh yeah, it's just weird. You just never know how one shit's, something's going to connect to something else. Like I usually am not sitting here listening to this news thing and now, you know, it could become this whole other part so but then when you sit down sometimes to be creative and yeah you're just like nothing is coming in what is this shit yeah it can feel a bit like making an appointment to have sex (laughs) (laughs) yeah exactly it's on the calendar for 3 p.m tomorrow (laughs) now (laughs) yeah yeah, exactly oh i got but it's amazing if you can if you can do that and you can show up for that yeah that appointment (laughs) <laughs> yeah and I'm always impressed with like people that have like writing schedules and they're just like I'm working I work every day for like four hours a day like on whatever comes into my mind and I'm just like right it's just not not a way that my brain has ever worked creatively <laughs> no me either actually yeah I do find it's quite a relief to just like I forget what who said this but you know just the first draft of anything is shit so it's like mm-hmm. yeah even if you're not inspired I, I always think there is probably some value in just putting down some shit Mm -hmm. because then you can go back and like polish it at least polish Mm -hmm. that turd polish that turd (laughs) yeah (laughs) got to yeah or it just like inspired like you can react from like oh forget that it needs to be you know maybe that gives you an inspiration exactly to judge yourself I love to judge myself. The more often I can do that the better yeah the phrase polish a turd is so weird because you would actually just make more of a mess if you tried to do that. So <laughs> it's just a strange, it's right, just a strange right. phrase in our, <laughs> in, in our nomenclature. <laughs> but wait, is not correct me if I'm wrong, but don't you say polish a turd, like in terms of something you can't do? Is that right? Like no, you I think can't it's polish you, a turd. It's something's bad that you want to, you want to make the best of it. Right. Hmm, I is always it, thought is, it's like, you can't like, can't polish a turd. Like there's no hope for it. Yeah. Oh, Okay. I don't oh, yeah, know about so you guys, but I feel like I've brought some real turds to life. <laughs> so... <laughs> Have you polished them, though? That's the question. Uh, like, did you polish method? them? Maybe I it's will. better if you shellac them. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I think Seal bronze them. them? Preserve bronze them. Yes. them like a baby shoe from the 50s, <laughs> there you I go. think. Mm. <laughs> I used Bronzy. to have some bronzed <laughs> shit. That I got uh-huh. on Catalina Island because, you know, uh, Catalina Island off Los Angeles is overrun by Buffalo. Mm-hmm. And uh-huh. so in the souvenir shops there, you can buy uh, it's probably just mud, but you can mm. buy gold plated shit. And I thought that was really funny. There you go. <laughs> so that's the move. I love the humans shit. like we will sell anything to our e- each other. <laughs> and it's a beautiful but, thing. But but some of it is accepted and some of it isn't. It could be like. Yeah. So close. And then it's like, that works and that doesn't. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like a do it yourself uh, bronzing kit for a buffalo shit. No, no, no. Really but if you've work. done it for me, mm-hmm. it's shiny mm-hmm. and I'm yeah. ready. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. When is peach season? When is peach season? What does that even mean? It's, I don't know. It's open to whatever you want. <laughs> open season. In all seasons. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. A peach awesome. for all Season seasons. On peach. That's perfect. Where, where does the name Peaches come from? From a Nina Simone song. Oh, oh. cool. Nice. And um, yeah, no, I just wanted her literally at the end of her song for women because she mm-hmm. said they call me Peaches just because the way, literally the way she said Peaches was so, with with so much passion and anger and. Uh, yeah really that i was like can you be singing that word to me can you be calling me then and i never thought you know she's not gonna be going meryl so (laughs) (laughs) so i was like you better change my name (laughs) do the people in your private life call you peaches too or they do now yeah yeah i mean yeah there's some there's some merylers around yeah (laughs) Yeah. i always wonder how that transition works like there's the old joke that like one day sting was just like call me sting um (laughs) but it's like yeah i mean you're the yeah 
that I always. It's funny. The that. more official things you have to do, and you know, that also gets like you know, when do you use your real name, or who, or, or it's also interesting who wants to call you Meryl and who wants to call you. Not you, me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah who yeah. wants to call you by the name that they know you mm-hmm. as, or do they want to like call you, you know, um, your birth name, or you know, mm-hmm. should I just change it and then they can never call me that again? Yeah, no. Or people yeah. who don't know me who are like, "Hello, Meryl." Yeah, it's that's like, oh. I don't, I don't know you. Yeah, yeah. No, when I saw if they've known you. When I saw Ad Rock walking down the street one day in Silver Lake, <laughs> I was like. Uh, what do I say? Because I'm like, Adam. I said Adam, and then that felt weirder, but if, uh, saying Ad Rock feels weird. I don't know. It was a... <laughs> but we're yeah, best friends Sean, now, so it's fine. It's weird because, like, obviously, you know, Sean's my husband, so you think that, like, my legal name is Teresa, but, like, he met me as Tess, so, like, you would think that I wouldn't care what he called me, but, like, mm-hmm. it's really weird when he calls me Teresa. No, that's weird. Mm. Of course that's weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. So formal. <laughs> I know, but like my family calls me. T- so I'm used to like people who are familiar with me calling me Teresa. But like my siblings have known me since I was, was Teresa. Yeah. You know, like it's not something it feels weird to like bring it up late in the game. Right, right, right. And you're like, when did you make that switch over? Like, <laughs> yeah, totally. like, well, right. every every person I've had a serious relationship with has an older woman in their family named Barbara. So that's always fun. <laughs> I just found out Adam has like an Aunt Barbara. I was like, what the fuck? Another one? And I remember one of one guy like wanted to say my name in bed and felt weird because his mom's name was Barbara. Oh, no. <laughs> I, ha- I had an Aunt Barbara. Really? We could date. I, I had an Aunt Barbara. Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's my requirement Dang. now. So you're good. Um, <laughs> Actually, I have I have two. Oh, my God. I have two. Whoa. Yeah. Peach is top two. of the Do they go now. by Babs or Barb? Um, Barbie, she's like a psych, uh, like a really heavy duty, respected psychologist. Oh, cool. But she goes by Barbie. (laughs) I like it. And, um, yeah, my other, my other aunt was Barbara, Auntie Barbara. But that's so funny. You gotta make that choice. I didn't realize I had two. (laughs) (laughs) You're my only Barbara, Barbara. Oh, thanks. Yeah. You're my only Barbara, too. So we can't date. We can just podcast together. Okay. Forever. We'll just be podcasting together for all eternity. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Last question before we go to break. Peaches, why can't everyone just be cool? I know, right? <laughs> that is, that's a, no, and, and, and I take cool in the way that why can't people be just tolerant and open yes. and understanding course, yeah. and, mm-hmm. Why? It takes I, a lot of understand. effort because being cool, I feel like it takes a lot of effort to be all those things, like to be the sh- a shitty I think it's person. Just a, it's, just, it's just insecurity and um, a lot yeah. of bad, uh, bad, like learning, bad, bad mm-hmm. non-learning or just a lot of fear. Yeah. Yeah. There's so much mm-hmm. fear that comes from like a scarcity mindset too, where it's just like, there's not enough for others or something. And you're like, exactly. or there's not enough for me if everybody else gets it. And it's like, yeah. oh man, there's yeah. a big, big old world out there. Yeah. That <laughs> well, yeah. insecurity yeah. is something that like, I just like, man, it's so easy to see the older I get when I like see something going on and I'm like, oh, that's, I can see where that's coming from. You know, and it's not something you can like necessarily yeah. fix mm-hmm. or whatever, but it's like very easy to identify. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I'm not saying, I mean, we're all insecure. I'm insecure, yeah. you know, but, but it's just like, you have to at one point recognize and, you know, relinquish and uh, let down the defenses. Right. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's, it's tough out there. And like, take it out. On, don't take it out on other people. You know, that's it's so like, easy. Yeah. yeah. But I think also a, a lot of it is, uh, you know, patience doesn't like come naturally, especially in modern times like I guess back when we didn't really have books or TV or whatever maybe people were naturally more patient because you just had to like sit there and look at a rock for four hours but mm-hmm. I see so many people being assholes where it's like all just like ch- who gives a shit like who gives a shit if your coffee is going to take four more minutes or like oh do you God. really need to be driving like that you're endangering other people just fucking yeah. calm down yeah we live in a society we live in a collective like it's like your own individual thing is not the most important thing it's about like the unity and like the harmony of everybody around you you know that doesn't mean that like you can't go after what you want but it is also like 
that doesn't outweigh the needs of like the society that you choose to live in. I wonder, well, I mean, I think you're all like in LA, you're all, everything's opened up again, right? Mm -hmm. Like just started to, but I just, I just wonder like if people are going to be a little more tolerant of it's good or they're just so impatient to get back. Yeah. Or yeah, just, honestly, I can just, say absolutely not. People have not changed. So they haven't learned just, shit. They're still assholes. People drive. Right, like driving. it just feels like they're right yeah. back in it. People are driving yeah. crazier than ever. It's like not. Oh, right, yeah. Right. When LA the first shut really down, bad. when this whole city shut down, I shit you not, nobody was going to work. Nobody was going anywhere. I was right. aggressively tailgated. Where <laughs> was this guy going? Not to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sure it wasn't funny, but that's like. <laughs> oh no! Now <laughs> afterwards, what it all comes down to. Yeah. 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 No. I. Yeah. It's. It's. It's like deeply disheartening to see people like not have like learned that lesson after we all survived. Well, not all of us survived a global pandemic, but like you know, right. <laughs> like after we've gone through this, where it's like. Yeah, you think there could be another? Yeah, but then it's like, nope, never happened. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, it's gonna. The, the coming That's out gonna of this happen is gonna here. We never experienced that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, get ready. <laughs> okay, we're gonna take a break and then come back and do a lady problems. Be whoop, whoop. everybody. Hey guys, I'm Elizabeth Taylor. And I'm Alex Shapiro. We're estheticians and the hosts of the True Beauty Brooklyn podcast on Exactly Right. All right, dude, it's not that kind of beauty podcast, so forget whatever you're thinking. Yeah, we're experts in all things skin, but really we just want to explore living in a multicultural world through the topic of beauty, because that's something we can all relate to. And we invite old and new friends from our New York City community and beyond to teach us things that we can't teach you. And try to have a ton of laughs along the way. The True Beauty Brooklyn podcast is now available on Exactly Right. Subscribe now at Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you like to listen. Follow us on Instagram at True Beauty Brooklyn Podcast and add on Twitter at True Beauty BK Pod. See, See you soon. soon. everybody we're back on lady to lady the podcast you're listening to in your ears this is babs i'm brandy i'm tess and we're here with peaches okay we're gonna do some lady problems uh if you have one you can send them to us at lady to lady comedy at gmail.com you can also leave us a voicemail 323 but 30 is the phone number here's the song Lady problems. Do you have them? Lady problems. Do you have them? People have them. <laughs> I forget that there's a bark at the end of that. Sometimes I hear it. Mm. <laughs> Just I think that's, that's my favorite of your theme songs, I gotta say. Oh, thank, <laughs> thank you. you. I think yeah, that's yeah. one of our best ones. Probably sure. like our most classic one. Yeah. It's love classic. lady problems. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This one is written in to us. Okay. Hi. Hi. This is me saying hi in the letter. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Firstly, thank you for your podcast. It's a pleasure to listen to and a gift to have some moments of levity during a pretty dark year and a half. I really appreciate you all continuing to private, provide entertainment through the, throughout the pandemic and give us some guaranteed laughs every Wednesday. It does make stay at home orders less lonely. Um, you're welcome. Okay. <laughs> I'm having a bit of a hard time with my mom and would love some advice. I separated from my husband about two years ago. We met when I was 17 and got married when I was 24 and separated when I was 33. It was a difficult separation because my ex was threatening to hurt me and to hurt himself. Oh my God. And it is this behavior that necessitated the separation in the first place. I didn't date for a year after and then got on the ba- back on the bandwagon when I felt kind of ready. The first person I started dating was a woman. I had started feeling attraction to women more and more over the previous two years and I'm happy to explore that attraction now. 
Truthfully, I do still have some attraction towards men, but for the most part, prefer to date women at this point in my life. I don't know if I would call myself a lesbian now or bisexual or pan, and truthfully, I really don't care. I don't need to label it. My sexuality is one of the least interesting things about me, in my opinion, and I don't need to be defined by it. Love is love. The trouble is my mom sometimes starts these fights where she claims that I don't know who I am. Bisexuality doesn't exist, and therefore, I've clearly been a lesbian my whole life, and I married knowing I was a lesbian. And says, since I've always been a tomboy and I still often wear men's t-shirts and flannels, that this points to me have, having always been a lesbian. She even used the term cross-dresser, which really bothers me as someone that thinks gender binary is bullshit and people should whatever the, whatever the fuck they want. How I dress is not related to my sexuality. Um, yeah. I also feel, I, I also very much was attracted to and loved my ex when we got married. We separated for reasons that had nothing to do with my sexuality and her comments are invalidating my marriage too. I love my mom, and other than that, we have a lot of fu- other than this, we have a lot of fun together. It's just when she starts this fight, it gives me anxiety and produces feelings of internalized shame that are harmful. I also resent her insisting she knows my own sexuality, and I don't. It's just ho- hurtful in so many ways that are hard to describe. She won't listen to me, and I'm not sure if she will stop. So I don't know whether to cut back on our time spent together or just try to com- compartmentalize what she says as her just being from a different generation. She doesn't get it, and just not and just work on not letting it get to me, so we can still have fun times. Any advice would be appreciated. Hmm. Okay, sorry, that was a long, a longy. Um, God, that's so it's hard. pretty. It's tough because clearly your mother may be questioning her own sexuality. Oh, interesting. You know, yeah, and um, just doesn't realize how to understand uh, how her daughter has learned to question and 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 open up to these things. So it is, a, it could be a generational problem, but it's, mm-hmm. it's, I don't think it's her problem. I think it's, it's definitely her mother's problem, obviously. Mm-hmm. And, um, I'm encouraging her to turn it around and, and instead of seeing it as herself, see it as her mother questioning, mm. you know, that's so I'm not saying, I'm not saying, I'm not saying your yeah. mother's a lesbian. I'm not saying that, yeah. but I'm just saying like, if you have problems that like you can, you cannot, it also sounds pretty controlling, like to, you know, mm-hmm. to totally just to say, yeah, no, it, it, it sounds like a pretty smart letter too. it already sounds like she's pretty, you know, what she said about um, how she dresses and, and, and who she's, um, you know, spending her time with and that she really, you know, it's, a, I, it's really like her mother needs help on that. I don't know. <laughs> it's not yeah. a problem at all. She sounds really together about it. Actually. But do you guys think she should like dial back on uh, time with her mom? Because I think that it sounds like she's already tried talking yeah. to her about it. Right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. What actions should she take? A part of me is like, maybe she yeah. should because she already just kind of went through some bullshit. Yeah, you know? right. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's tough. It's like, yeah, uh, you don't want to not spend time with your family member because of this kind of stuff. You know, it's hard. Like I'm yeah. bisexual or I, I think I'm pansexual. Like, again, same thing where I'm like, I'm not really like putting a label on it. I just am who I am, you know, and it, it's so frustrating. And I think a lot of people can identify with this where someone mm-hmm. really wants to label you for some reason. And you're yes. like, I don't care. Like, this is not why are you so obsessed with like tell saying I'm this or that? It's very strange, like obsession that I think is of their generation for sure um but yeah my mom did not you know she just was really weird about it when I like came out to her and didn't like I don't know I think kind of just swept it under the rug basically you know and so we don't talk about it that much and um I think like it would be hard for me to be like I'm not gonna hang out with my mom because she doesn't you know like I don't know if that's the answer because I still want to see my mom so but maybe it would help her maybe she could have a it would give her a little space to go like, mm, why doesn't my daughter want to hang out with me? You know, she'd mm-hmm, be angry yeah. at the beginning, but then she'll be like, mm-hmm. you know, maybe I should read up on this more or, you know, maybe she could mm-hmm. spend less time with her and in a very gentle way, sort of like nudge her to, uh, to give her some, mm-hmm. oh, is that bad? Like some uh, like uh, readings mm-hmm. on it or something like, hey, maybe you would find this interesting. Uh, yeah, I love I love that idea. And I think it, it's so interesting that that your 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 first thought peaches was also being like, oh, I think this is the mom's insecurity coming through. It's definitely. Yeah. It's so because like in pop culture and everything, we see so much like uh, homophobia and like lack of identity in, in it mostly shows up in like in in, in men. 
but we like never really mm. think about it from like the female to female mm. perspective. And this is like a generation of women too, who like, obviously not all of them, but like mm-hmm. were like their path was so much sh- like more just, there's only a few things that you can do. So like, as you get older and like, you do have a daughter or, or a child at all that has so much more freedom and can do all these things. Mm-hmm. I, I can imagine it being also difficult to be like, well, Oh, I like I I could have I could have done anything. Oh, I, or but but I didn't. Like it's, she it's, resents it's difficult. it, maybe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like the freedom is it's hard to you know. I, I would yeah. imagine you would slightly not consciously resent that freedom, but like you know subconsciously would have just like no, I did. I was a good daughter, good wife, totally. good mother. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's what they were told. And I mean, I know. I, I know that there is like a thing also like, with like an older generation of like the identity crisis of like once children have left and like the, the sole identity of like as mother goes where it's like, Oh shit, no one told me what I'm supposed to be now. Mm-hmm. You know, I will, I do want to give a little more advice. I've, I've had yeah, please. very, uh, I've had experiences similar. Um, mm-hmm. I, you know, I don't know how, person I want to get into it but just to let let her know in my situation um I feel like my mother has grown so much Mm -hmm. and you know was really it was really that that feeling of um intolerance or like uh, judging or no space and all that but and there was space given and then it opened up more and more and I think that Mm. it can go either way also when you get older you know, like mm-hmm. as a as a, a nestless parent or whatever, and then, and then mm-hmm. but in my mother's case, it's like it's a it's a revelation, like it, it, to a point where it, it it's so good now in terms of mm-hmm. like discussing these kinds of things and that's amazing understanding. Yeah. yeah. So so there's hope. That's what I want to say to that person. Yeah. That I I think that you you have a good perspective and keep your perspective, and your mother actually needs to grow. And like maybe if it helps you, like. Like you just said, it almost like if it helps you think about your mom, instead of thinking about it as a reflection on you or what you are not being labeled as, like maybe, yeah, just think of it in like, oh, this is something that maybe you can feel sympathy for your mom for. Like that does kind of suck. If that's the Mm -hmm. case that she kind of was raised in a time where she didn't feel like she had the liberties that she should or could have had, that's shitty. And and maybe that will help you like depersonalize Mm -hmm. it and look at it for what it is, which is really like her own story and her own situation. Yeah. Or maybe you can even talk to her about that stuff, like just that mm-hmm. stuff, not mm-hmm. and then, you know, mm-hmm. but yeah. just maybe mm-hmm. she'll she'll start to let her, connect ha- you know, dots, when you have more compassion, yeah. maybe she'll also open up in a new way. Mm-hmm. That's well, a very good w- point. Yeah. And I wonder, too, like how if your mom knows any bisexuals or like has, I mean, the representation in media is nowhere near as good as it should be in any capacity and like in her personal life. If there's like 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 books or like TV or like even just like, you know inviting her out to like brunch with your friends where it isn't even you guys talk about being bisexual, but she sees that these are like people that just mm-hmm. are live like other people. Like, I think there is something to like, if you're sheltered and you don't know, I think, I think a lot of people, especially Americans are like good at like concrete empathy when somebody is in front of me and I see this 3d person and what this person is, yes. but our abstract, our abstract empathy is we're, we're we're conditioned you know not to have it (laughs) in a lot of ways because that's how the world continues to work but like so it's hard to put yourself there or to even see people as people and I think uh, sometimes if you're not like necessarily exposed to them and like you know it shouldn't have to be that way but I do think it like helps quite a bit to be like oh it's not that serious actually Mm -hmm. I also just like the idea of yeah do throw a bisexual brunch and put your mom there in the middle (laughs) oh bisexual brunch yes for a (laughs) memoir yeah absolutely (laughs) And, and I also do think like it's also a good boundary like it's a it's an exercise in boundary with, with you guys too where it's like you can hang out and if she brings it up it's like we're not going to talk about this if you continue to push like I have told you you need to respect me this is actually a, a respect issue and you know I'm going to leave now or I'm going to like remove myself or change whatever uh, like you have that power like as the child you, you do also have the power because like your mom's ultimately you know most parents like will do anything to see their kids <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah. I'm optimistic but. though. It sounds like they have a, pr- yeah. a relatively good relationship. So I'm op- I, my I feel like a little bit of space, being honest about why you're giving space. Mm-hmm. I I, yeah. I actually think that you guys will be able to work through this. I yeah. Think so too. Yeah. You're exactly. starting off from a good at least like yeah. She you guys do have. Mm-hmm. It's not like it's you're being shut out or something like that. So 
That's a good way to start off with it. But yeah, good luck. I mean, I, you know, it sounds like you're very certain. I, I'm glad that you're just certain of who you are. And I, yeah, yeah uh, those issues of like letting the shame get to you, that's like to me the worst part because it's just like you should have the unconditional love from them and like should not mm-hmm. feel that shame. Yeah. And, that, ugh, that's, that's I hate bad. that yeah. fucking feeling. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, good on you for like kind of recognizing it and, and yeah, good luck. It sound, and thanks for, you know, asking us to help you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Let us know how it goes, please. We we really like love hearing follow ups on our lady problems to know if like if what we've said have helped and if anybody listening also has uh, additional advice. We like post these questions on our Instagram, um, so other like, listeners can like throw in their advice if they've have similar experiences or not as well. So well, yeah, we're a, a beautiful community and we all want to support each other and love each other and just be our best selves. Yeah. Damn yes. straight. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that's why I wanted to come on the show. <laughs> damn straight peaches Aww. Aww. <laughs> that's our show peaches everyone can find your new single pussy mask out is there anything else you want to shout out for everybody to check out um well just check out pussy mask i mean you can the vinyl hasn't even come out yet but came out digitally so oh cool comes well, out yeah you can go week, download so. it and oh, perfect. and check it out right now and yeah. then go buy the pre-buy the vinyl then you and the video is so fun. Oh, yes. Awesome. It's made by Watch Leah video. Shore. Yeah. Can't wait it's, to see it. Oh, yeah. It's That's really gonna be good. so awesome. <laughs> and honestly, congratulations on Teaches of Peaches being 20. Like, what a fucking awesome career <laughs> that yeah, you know, you've thank always you. done your way. And that is just oh, like deeply inspiring and fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Hell and yeah. you guys are doing it your way too. We've done it our way. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's not a lady to lady if we don't end on a Sinatra lyric, really. So. <laughs> okay. That's the thing. I didn't know. No, no. <laughs> when I was 64, it was a very... No, just, <laughs> it was a giant Please take it away. We're good. Um, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and, well, thank you so much, Peaches. It's really great talking thank to you. you. Yeah. And uh, love everybody listening, and we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. Thanks, y'all. Bye-bye. Bye. Three, two, three. Six but thirty. It's six but thirty somewhere. Hi, um, my name's Caroline. I'm a new listener and MFM transplant. I love your podcast so far. I just finished listening to Bone Jail um, with Lisa Traeger, and I related so much to the lady problem about like being on your phone and the whole conversation about. Our phones are um, addictive. I just graduated college and did my entire senior thesis design project on uh, phone addiction in the future. And I think everybody had the right idea. You have to figure out the right balance for you and the right balance um, for yourself during a global pandemic because we all have to give ourselves a little bit more uh, slack right now. But another really great resource is the Humane Tech Society. It's run by ex-Google employees who are really against the way that we're treating our personal technology and our phone. And they have a podcast called Your Undivided Attention, and they talk all about how phones are addictive and ways to circumvent that. And it's super, super good. And then um, one, my, one of my favorite quotes from them is the cure for phone addiction is not phone abstinence it's human connection so writing letters and snail mail to your friends or when you pick up your phone and you have the urge to just scroll through instagram call someone instead those are all really really good ways to avoid phone addiction okay i love you bye hi ladies i'm an american listening to you guys in australia and i'm literally making an international long distance phone call to have a response to danny who doesn't know what to do with her life I just have to say that I went straight from college to law school. I spent $100,000 to become a lawyer at 25. I thought I had my shit together. And guess what? I hated it. I hated it so much. I was miserable all the time. And eventually, I just had to take a break and go work at the Pottery Barn and help middle-class people pick out their stuff for their house. So just wanted to say to her, like, don't feel the pressure to pick your rest of your life thing. Just pick your right now thing, and it'll fall into place. I've had four careers since then. And so I want to tell her, don't think of yourself as a kernel waiting to pop. Think of yourself as a tree that is going to bloom season after season after season. Thanks, ladies. Bye.